like, man, I saw that new 4075R. He's like, I think that's the one I want to get. I'm like, why? Why? Where, where did John Deere get this justification from? If you really need that much more horsepower, get a bigger tractor. There's no real reason to. I don't know who can justify buying that. Not once did I ever think, huh, boy, I could really use some more horsepower. So it's probably not a popular opinion. I understand that. You know, I never thought I would be the guy to really say this, but I think there is such a thing as too much horsepower. All right, now, John Deere has hit a lot of home runs, okay? 2038R, like it was the most horsepower in its frame size for a long time, 38 horsepower and two series tractor. There's some definite advantages to having that much horsepower in that size of a tractor. Same thing can be said with a John Deere 3046R, 46 horsepower and a three series uh, frame size tractor. I've, I own one of those for a couple of years. It's an amazing tractor. I know a lot of folks that have that tractor and, and I think would agree with that. Now I've owned two 4066Rs and a 4720R, 66 horsepower tractors and a four series frame size. And that was the biggest horsepower that you could get, the most horsepower you could get in that frame size for a long time. Not once did I ever think, huh, boy, I could really use some more horsepower. But guess what? John Deere went ahead and did it anyways. <laughs> Came out with the 4075R, a four series tractor with 75 horsepower. And it kind of left me scratching my head. And uh, I want to get this right out there that if I was looking for a new four series tractor, I may very well be inclined to get that 4075R because that's just kind of like what I do. I, <laughs> I have a thing where I just get the, the highest amount, whatever it is, the top trim line, the top package, the top horsepower in whatever. It could be a truck, it could be you know, a Ranger, it could be a tractor, it doesn't matter what it is. I just kind of have a tendency to do that. But there's no real reason to. I, I think it's, I don't know who can justify buying that from a practicality standpoint. And so while I think that it's got that cool factor that, you know, if you want to have the biggest, the baddest one on the block, then you go ahead and get it. But yeah, I just had a buddy over here recently and he's got the 3046R. I sold him a 3046R and it's been a good tractor for him, but he's thinking he wants to now get a bigger tractor and a smaller tractor. And he's like, man, I saw that new 4075R. He's like, I think that's the one I want to get. And I'm like, why? You know, like what, what are you going to do with it that you can't do with the 4066, you know, and nothing. You can, it, you can do everything you want to do with the 4066 that you can do with the 4075R. You're just paying more just to say you have it. I guess this is kind of a, a sounding board for you folks out there that are trying to make a decision. There's a new model out there. You know, it's got some other improvements on it as well. I'm not discounting any of those kinds of um, advancements that are made and that you can get with this new model that are out there. But it's just not necessary, you know? As a guy who loves to get what's not necessary just because there's no point, right? It's, I don't know what the upcharge is, probably a few grand or something. Normally you go from like the 4044, the 4052, the 4066, you know, your two, three, four grand more, whatever it is. So I would expect somewhere along that line and there's another stepping stone to get up to the 4075R. And I don't think 99.9% .9 of you out there ever need it. And I think a good way to validate that is all you folks out there that have a 4066 or a 4720 or shoot it could be the the Kubota Grand L 6060 because that's very similar and I don't know I'm sure there's other brands that have uh, the same kind of frame size with a 66 horsepower engine in it but how many times are you out there wishing you you had more horsepower how many times have you lacked the horsepower that you needed like where where did John Deere get this justification from I've, I've never had anybody myself included think you know that that tractor is leaving me hanging man it's just not moving you know, driving the attachments that I wanted to do. If you really need that much more horsepower, get a bigger tractor, get a utility tractor, like a five series. And guess what? You're probably gonna save some money. I've got a Kubota M4 right now, 71, 72 horsepower, something like that. It's way wider, it's bigger, it's heavier, it's more stable. For the most part, that extra weight has proved beneficial unless you get it stuck in a, in a, in a muck pit. And you're gonna get the guys that say, running things like bat wing mowers and big old huge tools on hot summer days and you've seen our 4720 overheat but those big hydros they just get hot right and they maybe have a higher tendency to overheat but they're going to run hotter got to clean the radiator off more often whereas these bigger gear drive tractors if you're really looking to get into that kind of horsepower they're going to run cooler right they're going to set it and forget it put it in gear and just get to work <sighs> So it's probably not a popular opinion. I understand that. And all that said, you may be, you may be running into challenges getting as many PTO driven attachments as you want, potentially. Maybe it's not an issue at all, but you know, it's 
you're kind of breaking the mold a bit when you're stepping up another nine horsepower above and beyond there where a lot of gearboxes aren't rated for that kind of horsepower range and you then have to go to a larger more expensive tool to work with it to get into a real category two type of um, tiller or mower or brush hog or whatever the heck it is snowblower anything that runs on a, on a, on a off the pto you know they're just category one compact tractor stuffs had its framework already built out around it. And so now you're stepping up into something that's really muddying the waters on that Cat 1, Cat 2, uh, kind of frame size and overlap, and there's already enough confusion there as it is. And a lot of this comes back to how I've tried to preach a lot that for most of us, horsepower is not the first thing we should be looking at. And I still get the question all the time, I need a 25 horsepower tractor. My neighbor said I need a 40 horse. You know, this forum over here said you need at least 50 horsepower. I'm like, why? Why? Why do you need a certain amount of horsepower? I mean, what you need, most of us, is a loader that lifts a certain amount of weight or lifts a certain height or a three-point that does, you know, that raises up a certain height. Or we want to run a certain size attachment that only comes in one size. But the thing is, is I sell attachments, and most attachments come in a variety of sizes, right? And so you can mow a whole huge hay field with a little compact tractor like this that's 25 horsepower, but it's gonna take you a lot longer. You're gonna run a four foot brush hog instead of on a 60 horsepower tractor, you could run a 10 or a 12 foot bat wing if you wanted to, right? And so it's all about the amount of time you wanna spend doing a job or the size of the jobs that you have to do, uh, the budget that you have, maybe the terrain, if it's perfectly flat, if it's up in the mountains where you need more horsepower. Um, there's so many other criteria. If you're gonna do round bales, if you wanna stack round bales, if you wanna take them on and off trailers, if you, Need to do a lot of post hole digging. You know, you're gonna get shorter augers on, on a small compact or subcompact that doesn't lift the three point as high. There's all these other variations that come into play and limitations and factors that are have nothing to do with horsepower that you should be focused on looking at. And you see this with trucks all the time, right? Every year, you know, Ford's beating Chevy this year and then Dodge is beating Chevy and then, you know, every year, the next one's got more horsepower. At a certain point, it doesn't even matter, right? It's just it's just the cool factor, right? You want to have the most horsepower, but practically, 99% of us are never going to realize the full value of that horsepower that we're paying for. And on top of that, you can start to get a little bit more dangerous with uh, inexperienced operators, whether it's on trucks hauling trailers or on tractors doing things. You know, you you can make a case that the bigger the machine, the more likely you are to get yourself into a dangerous situation. That's probably not straight across the board there, but that's kind of the general idea of it is, is uh, there's a limiting factor. Oh, what's that saying? The, uh, the law of diminishing returns. You know, you, you continue to just keep thinking you're gonna get better and better, but that value that's associated with it is less and less. All right, so let's run through this really quick. Just the, the highlights, the things that you should really focus on to get yourself the right tractor. Horsepower is on the list, but it's down there, all right? So make a list first of the jobs. Why are you buying a tractor, right? You have projects, jobs, tasks to do. So write a list of those. And I don't sell tractors, all right? And I honestly don't have time to answer all the emails that I get about helping you pick a tractor. But talk to your dealers. A good salesman should immediately know when you look at the list, well, any tractor can do all these jobs, but oh, there's, I have to, I have to lift round bales. I always like to use that as an example. A tiny tractor like a 1025, you're gonna see guys say that they can lift round bales with it. I don't, I don't care. That's not a round bale tractor. You don't get the 1025R and lift round bales. You get something bigger. Um, or if you have to lift a certain height, if you have to lift over four foot dump beds for dump trailers, all right, um, and there. This tractor just barely clears my high side of dump trailer, you know, like barely, right? And so like a 1025, a Kubota BX are not gonna do that. So there's, you can immediately rule things out. I had a guy yesterday that said he needed a tractor with an 18 foot reach. An 18 foot, an 18 foot reach. Like I said, you want, I, I don't care if it's lifting out or up horizontally or vertically, but you're not getting 18 foot reach on a tractor loader, all right? I said, even the, what that Manitou have? That that went to like 20 foot, right? Yeah, you had to get like a Manitou, like a telehandler to get that kind of a reach. My JCB teleskid, I think is like a nine foot reach or something like that, I don't know. Anyway, so, you know, but the point being is that you can, you can quickly rule things in and rule them out. You can start to narrow down the things that will work just based on a list like that. And then budget's also gonna come into play. The tractor is just the starting point of the budget, all the attachments that go with it, because you're not doing a whole lot with just the tractor. If you have to brush hog a field, well, you add on a couple grand or a few grand for a brush hog or maybe a flail mower, a little bit more than that. If you gotta take care of snow on your driveway, it's either a snow blower, a snow plow, snow pusher, 
snow pusher is what obviously I would get, a grapple or a set of pallet forks, and then you can't forget safety stuff, right? Rim guards, standard in the tires, they're a channel sponsor for good reason. Everybody needs that weight in their tires to offset the weight that's in their front end loader with a bucket, with the grapple, with the pallet forks. You get more ballast weight in the back. You can see the, the suitcase weights back here. We're using these things all the time. We just had that big hydraulic mower up front. Good common weight for that. Even things like upgrades, like tires, right? A lot of guys now are switching to these R14 tires or the VersaTurfs. Standard on the Summit Tractor, shameless plug, but I've upgraded to these tires on the 4720 I had. I put the Carlisle VersaTurfs on my 1025R. Uh, and they're just a way better tire than a lot of the other stuff out there. So there's all these other little costs that are gonna add up and go into it that you need to account for as well. And then every single open station tractor needs to have a rhino hide canopy on it. It's the toughest canopy on the market, lightweight, easy to take on and off for transport or storage. You get yours at tractorcanopy.com. And then of course, dealer support, all right? Not just for the sale, but after the fact, right? And if you can, talk to their service department and get a feel for for how they're handling things, if they kind of have a, you know, a cool head on their shoulders. Um, but there's good and bad dealers in every brand that are out there. I get a lot of questions, a lot of questions about who's servicing Summit Tractors, and they have a whole, when they're building out a new area, a new region, <laughs> it's, it's just unorthodox how they sell products, right? They're selling it at mass retail, at Tractor Supply, at, at Home Depot, which is a really great way to sell something and makes it more accessible to a lot of folks instead of having to find one of the random dealers that are in different areas. They're not doing the servicing at those places. They have their own network of technicians and, and in fact, they have a lot of mobile technicians and they work seven days a week too. And so their whole service support network is set up a bit differently than a traditional dealership would be. Um, but it doesn't mean that they don't have support and service for the tractors that they're selling. All right, so again, you know, that's just my take on it. I, I honestly can't say I wouldn't get this, the 4075R because I very well might if I was shopping for one of those tractors, but it's not because I need it. It's just because I have a tendency to get the things that I want. Um, so grain of salt there for you. Listen or read the other comments that come in here. I really want to hear from other folks that have I guess it doesn't matter what frame size, but if you if you got the most horsepower in your frame size, if that was a good or a bad decision, if you couldn't got a, if you could have got away with less, um, in particular like the 4066, the 4720 owners, the Kubota L6060 owners out there, if you feel like that horsepower is adequate for the tractor size, if you feel like you're lacking horsepower, you wish you had more. Maybe I've got it all wrong. I put hundreds of hours on it myself and never felt that way, but that's just one guy's experience. But on that note, if you're looking for a tractor, then you're gonna need tractor attachments and we'd love to help you out. That's what we do, make videos about tractor attachments. So check them all out and then go to goodworkstractors.com. We ship all over the country every day of the week. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon.